Okay, so today we're evaluating uh, logarithmic functions, which is a little bit interesting. Basically, today we're going to solve for x, like we've done many times before. So if we look at our first example, log base 16 of 4 equals x. So the way we solve these, which is sort of opposite of what you normally think of, since x starts off by itself, and that doesn't actually help us. So what we want to do is we want to rewrite our, our logarithm in exponential form. So we remember from yesterday, log base 16, so that's going to be 16 raised to the x power equals 4. Okay. And now we're solving for x. So two real ways you could do this. One is in your head. You think 16 to what power equals 4. And if you know what that number is, you can just say x equals that and be done. But let's say you're looking at this and say, Ellis, that's, first of all, that's impossible. I can't raise 16 to some number and get 4. You're like, no, no, you can't. You can't trust me. But if you don't know the answer, we can solve this algebraically. And we think about uh, the same way when we solved uh, exponential functions. So I want both of my sides to have the same base, and then I can compare uh, their exponents. So 16, I know 16 is 4 squared. So you can say this is 4 squared to the x power equals 4. Uh, 2 times x, remember if you have x one raised to another x one, you just multiply those together. So 4 to the 2x equals 4. And then if you say, well, Ellis, there's no, there's no exponent on this right-hand side. Remember, if you don't see an exponent, you can say that this is 4 to the first power. Okay. So once you have the same base, then we can say 2x must equal 1, or if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 1 half. So our answer here, 16 to what power equals 4? That is the 1 half power. And hopefully you remember that when we did radicals. Remember we said that it's the square root of 16 equals 4. And another way to write a square root is with a fractional exponent. Okay, so you think of it, anytime you have a fraction, the number on top, this is your power. The number on the bottom, this is your, this is your root. So one half is kind of a weird example because you don't write any numbers there, but this is the, the second root of 16 to the first power, right? So anytime you're dealing with a fraction, that's how it, that's how it gets set up. And we're gonna see more of this uh, tomorrow. So the power goes under the radical, the root goes on the outside, so the denominator, okay? So to help you out as you're practicing these, if you get this case where your number on the left that's being raised to a power is bigger than your number on the right, you know you're going to end up with a, a fractional power. Okay? So that's one example. So let's go to our next one. Log base 1 half 256 equals x. So again, same as before. So base 1 half, so 1 half raised to the x power equals 256, okay? And again, you say, well, one half to what power is 256? If you don't know, then we say, can we get these to the same base? So one half, I don't wanna write that as a fraction, so I can say this is two to the negative, oops, hold on. Two to the negative first power raised to the x power. And then over here, 256, if I just count this off, so 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. That's 8. So 256 is 2 to the 8th power. Okay. Hopefully you have a chart with all your, your powers of 2. It's a handy thing to have. Uh, if we simplify this, this becomes 2 to the negative x equals 2 to the 8th. And then we see we have the same base, so we can compare our powers. So negative x equals 8, 
four positive x equals negative eight. Not too bad, not too bad. So again, to help you out, if one of your numbers is a fraction, one of your numbers is a whole number or an integer, then your answer has to be negative, right? Because you have to flip one of these two numbers, so it has to be a negative power. Okay, all right, one more. So log base four, 164th equals x. So this is gonna be four to the x equals one over 64. And based on the last one, I know my answer is gonna be x equals negative something. And this one's a little bit easier, four and 64. I say four to what power is 64? So four times four is 16, 16 times four is Wait, four times four is 16, then four more is 64. So that's the third power. So I can say, to skip this work, I'm feeling a little bit lazy, that x, not x, yeah, yeah, x is going to equal the third power, right? And since, this is a bad thing, since one of my numbers is a fraction, I know I had to flip that over, so this has to be, <laughs> Negative three, there you go, four. So see what we did there? If you know what it is, like if you know your 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 powers, you know your, your powers of four, and you can figure out how to get to the number on the other side, that's always gonna be your answer, right? So sometimes you work out, you work out all the time if you want. But if they're numbers you recognize, you can skip right ahead to the answer. Uh, just remember these two things. So if it's getting smaller, oh, I shouldn't say smaller, because 1 64th is definitely smaller than four. Hopefully you, you understand my meaning there. Like this one, we flip it over, that becomes 64, and then 64 is greater than this. So assuming they're both, they're both whole numbers. If your number on the right is smaller, you are gonna end up with a fraction, okay? And if you start with one whole number and one fraction, you are gonna end up with a negative, negative power. When in doubt though, just do the algebra. That's what we signed up for, right? To do good algebra every day. So let me know, let me know if you get stuck. We'll figure it out.